I forgot it was on me this time. <laughs> you did say that. <laughs> there go that awkward silence and loves. Man, today we are back again for another episode of R.A.O.P. This time we are interviewing the one, the only, Levi Without the Tribe. What's up, man? I'm glad to be here, man. <laughs> hey, man, look. I'm glad to have you, actually. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going I'm to I'm give you your, your time to, to do a proper introduction for yourself. I don't even think we introduce ourselves, but... It's all good. I know who it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, go ahead and let the people know. Levi Without the Tribe. Uh, also known as Levi Fresco. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Vintage Fresco. Levi Fresco on Facebook. Uh... I don't even mess with Twitter like that no more. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, Twitter kind of. Yeah. Well, hold on. How, how many hold up? We got three seconds. Three, two, one. Twitter ass. <laughs> yeah, you ain't gotta mess with Twitter, man. As long as you got your IG popping and YouTube popping, you straight. Facebook yeah. too. Straight up. Yeah, straight up. No, but no, but uh, no, but haters on Twitter, man. You ain't lying now. Um, so man, look, you're the first. Actual battle rapper mm-hmm. that I've met in Jacksonville. Yeah, I'm jumping straight in, but tell us a little bit about that. So I started back in, uh, damn, I think it was like 2012 or 2013, mm-hmm. I believe. So I was in Tallahassee. I was at FAMU at that time, and uh, yeah, I found out about a league down here called Barbarians Arena, and I was always always like a fan of Smack DVD Fight Club. Uh, Lions Den, all them DVDs that came out back in the days, came out back in the days. Right. <clears throat> I got in the ring because I was always, always known as the dude that the punchline rapper. Like I was listening to Cassidy Wayne and all that back in the days. Right. I used to battle niggas in the hood all the time. Yeah. So they were like, "Hey man, you should go ahead and get on the platform. Go ahead and get on stage." Cool. I did like five minutes, five to six minutes, one rounder. Then I got that itch after that. I was like, "Man, I'm gonna just try to move forward with it." But I was almost like that. I could have been on URL and all that, but it's politics and all that. Just like the music industry. But I yeah, feel that. I had my run. So That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. But I mean, I ghost right too. So hey, I get my BMI royalty checks. It comes in. Yeah. I, I hear my bars when I watch URL, but you don't see me. Mm. So hey, I'm gonna put it like that. Man, that's dope. That's yeah. dope. That's some major stuff. Damn, yeah. I didn't know it was like, uh, of course, you know, it's ghostwriting and like music, period, like industry stuff. Right. But I didn't know it was like ghostwriting and, and battle, battle rap. rap. That's, yeah, it got big now. You yeah, know? yeah, it is. Yeah. It's huge. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the metaphors got to be crazy, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. um, now, don't take this as disrespect. I would so you know how you write for a stand up comedian? Right. Joe right. look Joe looking at me because he Joe know how I feel about battle rap. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amp ain't a fan. I, I watch it here fan. and there. I was watching this I seen this week when uh they had disaster. I was watching the clips and shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you gonna laugh at me. You know what my favorite battle rapper is? I just like him because he just made me laugh. I like oh solo. Yeah, he funny though. He, yeah, funny. he funny. I like, yeah, he, I like funny. he be making me laugh. He but funny. I don't really know. I watch, I seen like disaster. He said the N word, and they was trying to get him up out of here. Yeah, yeah. I would watch. I watch stuff like that. I know uh, New Jersey twerkers. I know a couple of them. Mm. Shug, shotgun Shug. Mm. I know a little bit here and there, but I don't really watch it for the most part. <laughs> but I was about to say, is it kind of like? I didn't want to be disrespectful, but it's like acting almost like damn near like impro- impro- improvisation. How they got a uh, they got writers and stuff like that. Is Pretty it kind of like on the same thing? Pretty much, yeah. Because battle rap is like it's straight up, now. yeah, straight up bars. Like right, you gotta, right, you gotta right. get up and you gotta get a nigga up out of here bar wise. But gotta you gotta think, entertain the crowd too. You gotta think them niggas ain't they ain't rapping for 30, 30 seconds. No, nah. a verse ain't a this minute. Ain't one of you know what I'm part. saying? Yeah, straight <laughs> up, straight yeah. up. Um, these niggas be rapping for what three to five minutes type shit. Yeah. Then I with mean, the crowd stopping you, yeah, yeah, and, 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 and I, I was just about to say you yeah. stretch the time. On yeah. crowd reaction. Yeah, I be watching some like battle rap and I'll be like, damn, when is this round over? Like the, <laughs> the dude he go against, he go in for like a minute. And then the nigga, he just be he be going in for ten minutes. I'm like, of course he won. He said more shit, but yeah, it's like yeah. I like, what is the exact rules to like battle rapping when I watch this shit? Ain't no rules. Oh okay. <laughs> I fig I figure. I mean it comes from the streets, so it's no rules. It don't matter if you from the streets or you just it's they got Christian battle rappers. Right, right. They got all kind of different type of battle rap. You see the white boys from KOTD and all that. Yeah. Um 
It is different, but it's no rules. You say whatever you want to say. I mean, some people feel like, hey, in the contract, I don't want you saying nothing about my dead mama. Right, oh. right. And there's a nigga like Arsenal that's going to pop up and be like, F your dead mama. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, hey, yeah. it goes how it goes. It's battle rap. What's the, what's <laughs> the uh, most dicey battle you ever went in, uh, was in? I had one ever got chippy, like a nigga was like getting at you crazy. You like, all right, let me <laughs> let me get this nigga right. I'm gonna say against TG. Mm. Yeah, he from down here too. Yeah, and it, it got a little hectic, you know, and then with the crowd and all that. My entourage and his entourage. Yeah, it it didn't finish. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. You cool or you, yeah, we good. You, you we good? Cool. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It, it, it just our entourage and his and bumping his and all that. And it damn. get a little aggressive. So that's yeah. crazy to me that there's a battle. I don't know why I'm shocked that there's a battle rap scene in Jacksonville. Hmm. I don't know either, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I we was, had Arsenal down here. We had uh, who else? We had we had um J C down here. We had Daylight down here. So Bill Collector. It's just dope. you know, just to the side. Yeah. Just, maybe Jacksonville probably just at that time. It probably wrong time. It probably, right. probably like right now. Right. While URL is making the bid for you for all mm. battle route everybody in the mainstream, mm-hmm. it probably would have been better to fit in this time frame. Right. But you know, hey, I hear. I hear. Yeah, we made our history. That's dope. Yeah. That's, That's dope. Close, How was your rebuttal game when it came to uh, you know freestyling and shit in the middle of a verse? I don't think I ever had the rebuttal like freestyle. Because okay. I always already kind of like predicted what people would say. Yeah. Because there's always a nigga that's talked too much. Right. So right. back in the days when we had like debates or, you know, go back and forth and you know, like a face off, basically, you'll say everything you were about to say in your bars on stage. Like, nigga, you already gave me your game plan. I already know what you're going to say. So I'm going to write this down. I'm going to just strategize my bars and rebuttal everything you got to say about me. Kind of like the B Rabbit effect on 8 Mile. Mm-hmm. He already knew what. The, uh, the nigga from what is it, Avengers? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Papa Doc. <laughs> Y'all didn't know what he was going to say. <laughs> nigga said so he used it against him. Yeah. Yeah, Anthony Mackey. That's his name for those for the people watching. Go check him yeah. out. Yeah. Damn. Don't watch Black Mirror episode. Though. Nah, don't do not watch that. Pause. <laughs> oh, Lord. You, you know, Striking Viper. You watch Black Mirror? No, no, nah, that's nasty work. Don't watch no. that. Episode. No, I ain't never crazy seen work. it. But I will say, I will. He he got a show on. Um, it's actually pretty fire. It's on Peacock. Another pause. Uh, it's called Twisted Metal. It's after the video game. Yeah. Be okay. on that. That show is fire. Really? Watch I gotta that check that. I gotta check that out. Yeah, it's based off the video game. I ain't got yeah. Peacock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's free. If you got Comcast, it's free. I ain't got Comcast. Well, damn, nigga. <laughs> yeah. You got you, game cut? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got nothing. You fuck up. Yeah, go check it out, though. I'm, I might give you my login. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, the first time I was, like, introduced to, like, battle rapping was, like, you just said it, just uh, 8 Mile, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And I think that dude was, I feel like that did a good representation of battle rap. So what exactly made you get into battle rapping? Uh, Smack DVD, okay. Murder Moot versus J Mills. Yeah, that was yeah. good. That was the man. Yeah. That was the time. Yeah. You know what's crazy? I be slandering battle rap. I used to watch all that shit. I watched yeah, the Smack yeah. DVD. <laughs> I used to watch the shit on MTV late at night. Yeah, yeah. What was I Fight forgot. Club? Fight Club. And International P. The dude, the dude, he's all junk, the dude with the braids. He's like sixty. There 60. was a nigga yeah. in um in my neighborhood that used to love Philly niggas. So Joey Jahad and um. Mm-hmm. Uh, Reed, Meek Dollars. Mill, yeah, Reed Dollars, yeah, Reed yeah. Dollars. Um, all them niggas when they was coming up, starting out, yeah, I seen all of that shit. Which like, one was the one that got punched on YouTube? Oh, was Matt Joey, Hoffa with disaster? I was gonna say which one? I think it was Joey Jahad got punched. Oh, you talking about a Philly niggas? I think it was Joey oh, okay. Jahad. Yeah, somebody, somebody Joey sucker Jihad. punched him. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and you look in the like comments. in the middle of him rapping or some shit. Yeah, yeah. You look in the comments, they were like, "Oh, bro, died the next week." All right. Like, <laughs> It's like, <laughs> it's like one of them internet lords. Like, what happened to this nigga that nigga? Yeah, the comments say his breath dead, so I don't know. Well. But yeah, I definitely used to listen to Reed Dollars. I, I, so I just found, <laughs> fell out of love with battle rap and I just completely forgot. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I remember Jay Mills and all them niggas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Unfortunately, he's still battling. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got no choice. That young money shit ain't work out. Nah. <laughs> so, uh, are you from Jacksonville? Yeah, I'm from here, but. 
I moved around a lot when I was young, so right. I would just say I'm from here, half Jacksonville, half LA. I lived in LA half my life as well. So Okay. Yeah. You was banging out there? Hey, um, I don't know no game bang. <laughs> I don't know no game members. <laughs> I'm a wa- wa- hard working civilian. Hey, look, I respect that 100%. <laughs> what made you leave Jacksonville and go to LA? Uh, just moving around. My stepdad was a comedian, so uh, you can look him up. His name Roman Murray. He was on Common View way back in the days. Yeah. It was a BT show called The Way We Do It. And when he got on, that's when we moved to LA. Mm. Yeah, so we're standing out there. Yeah. Damn, I had. I bet that had to be like a culture clash. Definitely was. Honestly, to put it like this, you know how uh, what's the nigga little Mike from the wood? Yeah, that's how my first day was in LA. Mm. That's uh, how it was. Oh, you was a dancer with that big ass, oh, big ass rabbit. <laughs> that wasn't <laughs> exactly. Nah, exactly like nah. That. <laughs> you sh- nah, not like that. You man. slapped the girl, you slapped the girl ass, and the nigga named Stacy knocked you up. Nah, nah. <laughs> I, had, yeah, I you, had some run ins and you know, with. But some, yeah. Game members and all that, so. But yeah, I bet yeah. you did. It was like, damn, this nigga sound country as fuck. Yeah, probably. that's how yeah. they were like, bro. You so country, dog. Like, yeah. And not knowing the history, all the country niggas moved from the south to L.A. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Compton used to be a white neighborhood, a mm-hmm. white place. Mm-hmm. All the black people from the south moved out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So them niggas country too. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I say that everybody every week. got their own the. Yeah, what I say about Chicago niggas. Alabama niggas with coats. I say every other <laughs> yeah. They always try and say niggas country like, yeah, your your grandma most likely from Alabama, like Mississippi. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how long it took you to get used to like LA? I'd just say probably like a year. Okay. I had to learn what not to wear, stuff like that. Yeah. I kind of got adapted to the terminology and stuff like that. That's what I said. Kind of like like the wood. I even think about a, a experience I had, even like the hat scene when you said take that, take off that hat. Yeah. You know, certain neighborhoods you sport a certain hat. Yeah, and yeah. you can't wear that hat in that neighborhood. It ain't about the color; it's just a certain hat that you sport. It can be uh, what is the Seattle uh, Marinas or whatever it's called. That's a uh, Rolling Sixties hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mariners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a Rolling Sixties hat. I you got, can't go I to. I got pressed that way. I don't. Uh, I was gonna say they oh. almost beat up out of out of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I don't got it. I always wear. Well, this of course this is a Marlins hat, but the old school Marlins hat with the fish. I didn't know it was like some Mexican game called uh, I think it was called a Florentes or some shit like that. Some shit that was like this actually Florida represent men. two games actually. Yeah, you talking about the Florida just with the F? Yeah, yeah, with the fish on it, yeah, with the yeah, F, yeah. with the fish, and yeah, I was yeah. like, I was chilling. I was over there like, shit, I was in Englewood, I think. Mm-hmm. Nigga came out from where I'm from, like I said, I said Jacksonville, and he seen I was country as hell. He was like, oh, this nigga ain't from me. I'm gonna leave yeah, him alone. Yeah, yeah. So he just he just went on about his business. He was like, oh, okay. Yeah, they usually be like, what? Where you from? And you say a whole different city. Like, oh, this nigga ain't active. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Nah, he he just a tourist. But they'll usually tell you like, hey, bro, just don't wear that hat around here because it's gonna get hacked. You know? Yeah. But, yeah, there's certain hats you can just stay away from. Not saying you can't wear hats out there. Yeah. There's certain neighborhoods just don't wear. Yeah, I just noticed like if you're not in the hood, I just happen to be close to the hood mm-hmm. where I, where I was at. But if you like on the chilling for the most part, you should be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they ain't dope. pressing you like that. They, so they put that on the social media like, oh, don't wear this. So eh, just just relax. So Have a your, good time. So with your step pops doing um, that's intriguing. Your step pops on Comedy View. Mm-hmm. Did you like meet any certain like comedians growing up? Yeah, yeah, um, a few, a whole bunch. Uh, I remember I met Kevin Hart when he wasn't big, and he like right here, yeah. <laughs> that short. Yeah, and so that's when he was with his first wife, the the crazy one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, the dude that play uh, what's his name from Do the Right Thing with the with the four. Gold rings, you know I what don't I'm know, bro, name, but yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. you're talking about Radio I mean, Raheem. Radio I don't know, Raheem. I don't know, real name. Uh-huh. Yeah, God, I don't know, real love, name. hate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. God rest his soul, he passed away. But yeah, 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 I don't know, bro, name, but yeah, you met Ronaldo, right? No, damn, that's no. a legend right there. Rest in peace, him, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I used to go over to uh, God, God Torres' house. Um, God Torres had a house in uh, North Hollywood at that time, it was really like down the street from uh, Southwest T. You know, he was on the West Coast and being mm-hmm. nothing and all that. He was running mm-hmm. it out there. So, yeah, the house down the street on the hill. Then Joe Torrey was, you know, they brothers. They had a house right next to each other as well. So they kept in the family on the same land. So 
but we used to go over there to their house all the time. That's why I used to see the celebrities. How, that's how I used to see them. Yeah. So I met Kevin Hart, a whole bunch of different people, Regina King and all them. So, yeah. It was a good time, you know. That's fine. Look at yeah. Larry. I think Larry went two up in front. If they work. I was going to say, I'm trying <laughs> to think which one might. There we go. You're rocking. But yeah, that's yeah, that's that's dope, man. Nah, um, that's 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 real dope. How so? At what age were, were you initially out in LA? Like, did you did you start going out there? I just remember I was in fourth grade. Okay, we drove two days straight out there. Oh, y'all drove, yeah. nigga. We packed up everything and moved out there when he got that gig on the show. Got you. Okay, that's yeah. dope. That's yeah. dope. It was cool, man. Yeah. Your stepfather from Jacksonville. Nah, he's from St. Louis. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. He grew up with uh, Lavelle Crawford. So I, I know him before moving out to L.A. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's so what they both from St. Guy Tour and Joe Tour from St. Louis. So that's how, you know, yeah. they oh, all know okay. each other from the same city. Damn. So how was, like, the music scene at the time? Because I think it had to be, like, after, like, the chronic and shit. Because I, th- I feel like L.A. had, like, a point in time in music where, like, they wasn't really dropping shit like that. And when I got out there, it was the chronic 2001. Okay, that, yeah. I feel like that was kind of coming back. Yeah, I feel yeah. like it was like I think I feel like L.A. had like a ten year mark where they wasn't really doing shit till like the game came out. Am I wrong? That's true. I mean, they had the locals. They had a Raz cast. They had Yup Mouth. Um, mm. The East Siders was running it too. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. Spice One. But I think that what Elk means is that like <clears throat> even uh, Yup Mouth and them like they that. The loonies and shit, they 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 were low, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. you knew who they were, but they weren't making no major noise, you know what I'm saying? You had to be looking for their album and shit. Mm. Um Yeah, but on the West Coast, they kept the West right, Coast. Right, so right, right, right. to Bit Boy neighborhood, mm-hmm. they were playing number West Coast music. Yeah. Mm, until fifty dropped. And that's when Get Rich or Die Trying in the club was being played every album. Yeah. Yeah. That shit they that Get Rich or Die Trying album was phenomenal that that mm-hmm. that the release of that yeah we may never see nothing like that again no, i don't think so like no but let me ask you this what age did you start like rapping period and then at what point were you <clears throat> saying to yourself like yo i'm i'm i'm, I'm gonna get into battle i want a battle rap i started doing music when i was like i say about 12 years old and I came back from LA for a summer to stay with my grandmother. And I have a cousin. And he was like, hey man, you wanna go to the studio? And it was a studio on Pearl Street. And I, we walked down there. And it was like Pearl and Tallulah. I think Kuzel Studio. Shout mm-hmm. out to him. Yeah. But I recorded my first song there. And it was just for one hour. I think $50 an hour. It was trash. Damn. <laughs> that's a crazy for now. $50 yeah. an hour? Nah. That was mixing that's, that, that's, oh, that's, that's low? Nah, that's about the going. I mean, that's your going rate for like you walking into a studio. You oh, know what I'm saying? Okay. okay, I got you. I got you. I would say when you start paying seventy five, one hundred and twenty five an hour. You know what I mean? Then you in top tier studios, and you yeah. still, and some of them you still might be in the B room. You know what okay. I mean? So, mm-hmm. all right. So, what your rap style was like? Because you was out in L A. You was, you were a fan of battle rap, so you had like a southern style. What you was listening to at the time? <sighs> If I go back and listen to it, you could tell my accent was L.A., but I still had the terminology from Jacksonville, so yeah. it was a mixture. Okay. And I, sometimes I can catch myself when I listen to my music now, I can hear my accent and hear a little bit of Jacksonville in it too because of my terminology or right. whatever you know slang I use. But yeah, but that first song was trash. Nigga <laughs> said, what up, G? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that crazy. crazy. You still, you still got it. I still got it. I yeah. ain't playing it neither. <laughs> nah, go ahead. And send us, send us that song so we get, we get drop a snippet. Right. Of the- <laughs> I ain't gonna do it like that. <laughs> but like every line, it was just a punchline. I was yeah. trying to be on my Cassidy, you know, mm-hmm. tight tilt at that time. Pause. But you know, <laughs> damn. Hey, Cassidy. I used to listen to a lot of Cassidy. I, I used to everyone to, did. Everyone uh, did. What's that album? Split personality. Yeah. yeah. Well, I ran that album to the ground. He, he he had a good one, and then after that, it went sour. 
I remember I lost uh I lost yeah, thirty dollars yeah. one time. I did the worst bet ever. Who was that? So I was so much of a Cassidy fan. Of course I was a Jay Z fan. Nigga said too. his second album's gonna do better. That's what I did. That's what I said. He dropped the album, it's called Bars. Yeah. The Barry the Barry Bruh. Aaron Aaron Reese some shit like that. I <laughs> knew that shit was finna be it was, ass. It was called Bars, bro. He dropped that bit the same day Jay Z dropped uh No. Damn, what was that album? Shit, it had to have been damn. Was the one that it, had? Uh, it had to have been the black album, huh? The album from the movie, American, oh, American Gangster. Gangster. Yeah, oh, it was Gangster. Yeah. He dropped the bars in American Gangster the same day, and I said Cassidy was gonna sell more records. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey. you 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 lost your rabbit ass mind. I bet the uh, shout out to Ike. I was, I was like, bro, I bet you thirty dollars. He was like, this about to be the earth, 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 easiest thirty dollars of my life. Yeah, shook on it, bro. I don't think that nigga Cassie was close. I think that nigga sold like ten thousand. <laughs> bro, <laughs> that nigga, that nigga knew it was finna be ass, bro. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, like, that shit yeah. had my drink and my two step on it, didn't it? Yeah, I think that was like the only song. Yeah, yeah that was after that accident, right? The car accident. He yeah, had a little scar. Okay, yeah. Yeah, man, like, look the um. Swiss Beats ruined his career. I'm blaming Swiss. <laughs> Beats was ass. It was all right. I think it was more him. It was just. It was, I mean, yeah, it was definitely. At that time, him. we was wanting to hear like real lyrical shit. That nigga shit. say, uh, my Glock got a dick and it only hit niggas, so I ain't homophobic. No, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I was like. <laughs> Yeah, that shit like yeah. eventually, and then like I think niggas just like stop caring about extra like lyrical shit around that. I time. don't think it's that, bro. I think his shit just became like too un- predictable. Yeah, yeah, too predictable, unnecessary bars. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so after you dropped it, you went to the studio. You dropped that trash song, set of ass. How did you um bounce back? Yeah, what was your next step after that? I record another song. Yeah, I think it was called Full Effect, and we uh-huh. was rapping on the uh, Freeway beat. Uh, we going to do it again. It's the Full Effect, whatever that song was with Benny Siegel and the Young Gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I went in every bar, like every line. It was a punchline. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So at what point did you know notice like the music was like, all right, I got something with this, this. And when I got feedback, um, cause my cousin was passing around the late forest, and. Mm. When I came back again for one summer, you're like, hey, that's JIT right there that was on that song. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. y'all actually listen to the song? Y'all know about it? Like, yeah, I want to make this a career. Yeah. <laughs> that's a JIT. That's like, that's what I want to do. Straight up. Right. So, yeah. All right. So, what's some of the places the music took you? Music? Um, back then, it didn't take me nowhere, honestly. But now that I kind of like develop myself better, Mm. Now I'm getting more as in getting to the network and learning the business, how to get paid off royalties and right. all that other type of stuff. It's taking me more as in getting more money in the bank. Yeah, so that's right. all that matters to me. Right, For I don't sure. have to feel like I need to go on tour with anybody or right. you know be on the limelight everywhere. As long as I get that money and all that, and they actually like my music, yeah. I'm cool with that. I can just chill. You read any like books or anything? Yeah, the last book I read was actually Fifty Cents. Which uh, one? I have two of them. I didn't finish the Fifty Law, which you know. That's a good one. Yeah, All right, I didn't finish it yet, but the other one, what's it called again? Hustle Smarter. He got a couple. I've, like that. I've read the Fifty, the Fifty Laws of Power. I read that one, and I read uh, from Pieces to Weight. Mm-hmm. I read that one. Okay, but I know what you're talking about, though. I didn't get a chance to read. I that I think it's like Hustle Harder, Hustle, it's something like that. But yeah, yeah I read he was that talking probably pe- like in the week. Yeah, yeah. I read a couple chapters while well, I, I ain't read it. I was like on YouTube reading like yeah. the audio shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fifty, don't don't sue me, but yeah, <laughs> his, his books is on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I was listening to YouTube. He was telling the story about how he was um his son was asking him for money, mm-hmm. and he was like, "I don't feel right giving you money because we really ain't had no relationship right like, like that. You wasn't really rocking with me." But he said, "Let's make this money though." I ain't gonna give you money, but let's make money. Mm-hmm. And he said he, he bought like a, a store was going out of business. He bought like all the shoes. Yeah, all the shoes out the store and his son ain't wasn't was like the lazy. Yeah, being a spoiled <laughs> brat about it. I ain't wanna call brother. He was being lazy. Listen, yeah. fuck it, he was being lazy. Yeah. He ain't really wanna do it. And then like 
next thing you know, like businesses like StockX and different stuff like that blew up. And his mm -hmm. son could have had the first StockX, but he was just he was just lazy. Wow. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Had yeah. him set up already. Yeah. yeah. And, and then the, the the crazy part is Fifty one of the best businessmen. Right. In yeah. the game. Period. Yeah, he just randomly just thought of StockX, and he was like telling his son. Well, it was of course it was called StockX. It was like right, like right, com right. sneaker commission. Right. And he mm -hmm. just then. But yeah, that's dope. You any other books like strategy wise? Just for the listeners that's watching, that's trying to get into music. Like, how did you how did you learn your game to where you know you you understood how to, to how to get royalties and shit? It's a lot of people that's rapping right now, listening that mm -hmm. don't know the different types of royalties that that you can collect on. Yeah, I ain't read any books on that. That's YouTube University. There you go. Yeah, that's I mean, good. That's yeah, good. yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah, I just did my own research. So, who were some of the people that you that you <clears throat> followed or or listened to, or what were some of the things that you might have searched to to find? You know what I mean? Mm. Your knowledge. It was just some random people. Uh, I don't know their names. I just went to different channels. You know, mm -hmm. then I just found out that some of the stuff is free that you could just register for. I got a free BMI account as a songwriter, and I got a free uh, A Scout, whatever it's called, publishing ASCAP. account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Scout. I got that. Um, what's the other one? It's like Song Trust or something like that. Uh, yeah, it's um, Song Trust does do do that, but um, there's a Canadian one, CSAC. Yeah, yeah, CSAC. I checked that out too. But I think they said that they kind of flat and said that I already have a BMI account. Right, if right. I want to close have... that and move over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I couldn't do that. Can't be signed with two. Yeah. All right. How important is a BMI to the people that's watching? Hey. Um, as a songwriter, I get my BMI checks. I just got a deposit, I believe, two weeks ago, unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. And it was great. <laughs> That's yeah. all I'm going to say. So That's a blessing. Anything yeah. you do, like you go to the studio, if you do a show, register it. Yeah. Like, after this, it's like a performance. Right. I'm going to register this. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. And every time I do it, I even add y'all names. I will ask y'all, hey, what's y'all real name so y'all can get the credentials as well. Right. If y'all want to get royalties off y'all podcast, right. you get a percentage too so we all can eat. So anytime I go to the studio, my, I go to an in-home studio. My cousin is recording me. He don't even have to be on the song. I give him his all his percentage Yeah. just for helping me out. He do it for free right, for recording right. me. So I'm going to give you a percentage. Yeah. Let's all eat. Yes, yeah, sir. That's, That's what it's about. Yeah. Hey, man, you just gave these niggas some game, bro. Because most <laughs> people, they just, they just, they think you just record and then just put your shit on TuneCore and that's it. Nah, I mean, There's more to it. Today, as a, as an artist, <clears throat> you have to be everything because niggas aren't investing in artists anymore. Mm -hmm. They're investing in the machine. They're investing in things that they can pick up right now and move forward with you either look look the part for what they're they're trying to present they don't have to do too much to dress you up right or two you got enough motion on your own to where it's like okay well, what we do to back you just by putting our name on it and shit mm -hmm. you'll be good yeah they don't do artist development anymore no mm -hmm. so it's definitely good to learn about a pro um, right, your performance rights organizations. Uh, um, now nah, I'm drawing the blanks. What else you got to register with? Um, uh, Sound Exchange. Yeah, Sound Exchange. Yeah, uh, it's another one. I think it's called Sound Scan. Sound Scan. Yeah. Yep. And mm -hmm. you gotta make sure you have your ISRC code and all that. So those well, if your song get a lot of streams, you could be on the Billboard charts. You never know. That's yeah, dope. that's dope. Man, it's been a long time since I've been. Yeah, but yeah, man, all of that is important because, like he said, you can get you can get paid off of, and this is just for the listeners. You can get paid off of everything you're doing Facts. every time you move, and there's a way that those pennies turn to dollars, and those dollars turn to tens and twenties and thirties. Mm -hmm. Man, definitely. Consistency so is key. So back to what you were saying, Levi, we're going to backtrack. It was funny you just <laughs> said, uh, you said they don't develop artists no more, which they don't. But mm -hmm. I did see, a, it was A&R, he was on Twitter. He was like, 
Y'all say we don't develop artists no more. We do. Y'all just call them industry plants. I thought that was pretty funny, but is I feel like they still don't develop artists like that no more. Nah, the yeah. industry plants they referring to were already popular before they got signed. They, yeah, you know, for the most part. Yeah, and not even I mean to me the industry pl- plants that that if you look at them, they have connections to how it makes sense that they would even be at that level. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like mm-hmm. those girls. They live a very affluent life. Mm-hmm. Someone knows someone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Tony girls that be running while yeah. rapping. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And th- those are like the. And I think that that's who he was referring to. To be honest, I think he was just referring to everybody. I mean, I don't like the 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 white industry plants are industry plants. Because most of the part, because a lot of the time, I think also most people don't know what an industry plant is, so. They just see a, a person a bunch of places. They be like, "Oh, yeah, industry." Cause I seen some people call sexy red an industry plant. Like sexy red is not an industry. She's plant. Not, no, no, she just not. happened to be a chick from the hood that just happened to get popular. I go mean, viral. Look and at she where probably didn't expect it. Look at yeah. where the game is at though. Glorilla had literally just blown up a year or two prior. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right now, they're giving women, all kinds of women <clears throat> a chance to really be as big as, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they pushing the women right now. As you want. There's nothing wrong with that. Nah, yeah. nothing at all. Yeah. Yeah, but Ghost Rope is on um, women artists? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, how is that? Like, it's Ghost easy. Right for a woman? Oh, come it's on. so easy. Because you already know how women think. <laughs> <laughs> So you already know what, you, what they want to hear. That might be so. problematic. Yeah. <laughs> it's so easy. You're right, but it yeah. might be problematic. Well, yeah. yeah. And like Neo wrote that one song for himself, then Beyonce got it to the, yeah. left, to the left. Like, Nick, like, bro, why would you want that song for yourself? That nigga. <laughs> no, it sound like a man, you know, like actually, a manly song. Yeah, not at all. So like, yeah, it's actually easy to write them type of songs or battles, you know, bars or whatever mm. for females. It's, it's easy, man. That's all I'm gonna say. All right. Um, how you got your? I want to ask you. I should ask that again. How you got your <laughs> rap name? So you I got a unique off, rap name. Yeah, I started off as Levi Fresco mm. when I started battle rap. So I used to always wear Levi's yeah. at that time. Where everybody was wearing like the raffle on polo down and all that. I was yeah. wearing the Levi everything yeah. shoes and all that. It jumped green now. But <laughs> <laughs> at that time, it was cool. Right. So yeah, you I kind of put my I niggas on. Levi's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how I got my name. Like, that nigga always got the Levi's on. Then Fresco, you know, it's fresh. Right. So Levi Fresco. So after that, I just changed my name to Levi Without the Tribe. Uh, just to revamp, you know, have a fresh start. So Levi Without the Tribe, I'm always solo. I do. I like to do my thing, like, my way, you know, alone. I'm not saying I'm an introvert. I hate using the word introvert because right. I feel like it's just a trend now. Yeah. And you know, oh, I'm an introvert. Nigga, no, you're not. I think you're trying to be, because a real introvert don't have to say that. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I just threw that out there. But yeah, I like to do things alone and kind of like, I'm not saying I'm sneaky. I like to be a mystery. I like you to guess what I got going on. Yeah. You know? yeah. That's dope. Yeah. So um, how is it like, because uh, you're a family man, how is it balancing family life and the music? Oh, it's easy. Uh, so I write my music when the kids are asleep. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I wait till they go to sleep and I write my music. So usually I don't actually like write it down like I used to in the journal. I used to do the little Jay-Z and Lil Wayne thing. I do it in my head. Right. Then when I go into the studio, I add on to it. I probably type it in my phone. Right. And I type everything out. So because I might actually hear the beat in the studio, like I don't like how it delivered when I hear my vocals on it. Right, right. Let me switch it up. Let me take this word out. Let me put this in. So I type it all out from my head. But um, yeah, that's how I usually do it. It's easy. Your kids, uh, your kids listen to any of your music? Yeah. Uh, I have a song called New Heaven, and all my kids love that song. Uh, another song I just dropped, I did a video too called Dedication. And my youngest, uh, well, not my youngest, my middle child, he's about to be six. He loves that song too, so he had that on repeat the other day. Uh, that's dope. But it put a smile on my face to see my kids actually rocking with my music like that. Like, if that make them smile, that's cool. I don't care about anybody else that don't listen to my music. Right, right, <laughs> right. Nah, that's dope. That's dope. I had seen you, I, you, had, you had got you a house, didn't you? Yep. 
I just bought a house. Yeah. Congratulations. You know what I'm saying? Real quick. Look. <laughs> Round of applause. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah. And that, 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 that music, that's what did it, right? Get the. Part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're just going to say the music did it, man. He hey, popping with the music. Yeah. Yeah. It helped yeah. with some of the collections I had in debt so I can get yeah. my credit score to go up. So yeah. some so, of them payments did go towards that. Yeah. 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 Salute yeah. to that, man. That's, that's a big achievement right there. So yeah. that's something to be proud of. Yeah. So as a battle rapper, man, uh, let me ask this. Did you have a, do you, do you, do you hold on to a favorite verse? Do you have one battle to where it's like I never forget this shit? After it's funny because after every battle I forget all of that. I got so tired of rehearsing it every single day, mm-hmm. and I after the battle day I be done with. I like I can breathe now. Yeah, because I'm in the shower, I'm versatile. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> like right. Versatile. I'm actually rapping to a tile. Yeah, I'm in the yeah, shower yeah. alone. I'm in the car rehearsing the whole time when I'm on a call when I'm doing my job or something like that I'm on a conference call I'm on mute I'm one rehearsing it that's all day long and don't stop so I'll be tired of it do I remember it now hell no (laughs) I don't want to remember no more I feel it yeah but I do have my favorite battles I have my favorite battle was against uh Johnny P in Miami and Lush one he hosted the battle Okay. Uh, you probably know Lush one from uh, he was, GTX. He, he was on No Jumper to kick him off. Yeah, No Jumper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I actually hit him up to see if he was cool. He was like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was real dope. You be watching the, uh, I know you be watching like the shit now, because I was about to ask you, you could just go, uh, go into it. Like, what's your top five back, uh, favorite battle rappers? Top five? Uh, Daylight. Tay Rock, shout out to Rock, uh, JC, who else? New Jersey Twerk. Uh, I'm gonna go with Easy to Block, Captain. Oh man, oh, man. yeah. I think Easy wanted to. I think Easy cold man. Yeah, and he got that Philly draw like he like. bring the, like the old back. You know, Philly days, like them mm. DVD days, I like that. I ain't Pause. seen Easy lose a battle yet. Nah, I ain't seen it neither. Mm. I gotta yeah. check him out. Let me Man, Easy Cold, but. Easy Cold. I think he like one of the, I think he might be top dog in the game right now. Most definitely. But I would what? say that he's like after, he's like the new face. Like how Rock, he still got his long run. It's Easy time now. Yeah. It was Geechee at one time, but now Easy, I feel like he yeah. took that spot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Geechee definitely went on a run. Mm-hmm. So how is it like making music? Cause you know how they say like certain, certain, a lot of people say like battle rappers, like they be fire at battle rapping, <laughs> dealing content of song, music, music they don't trash. really, yeah, they don't really, not good with the music. So how is it like transitioning between the two? For me, it was hard first. So after coming, you know, I took a break from battle rap. I try to write a song. It was like it sounds so much like I'm trying to kill somebody yeah, <laughs> the yeah. whole time. And like, nah, this ain't it. So I just took. I had to just take like I think a year and a half to actually had a song that actually I fit battle rap bars into it, into life experience and everything that you know with my religious beliefs. I put all that into one category, and I found a way. So. The song is called Jimmy Jump. Whenever you get a chance, you can check it out and you'll hear it. And actually, to be honest with you, the same verse from Jimmy Jump is what I rap on um, Creeping Through the Streets. Yeah, I was about to say, didn't you do a video for Jimmy Jump on one of these? Yeah. I think you did a performance video for it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah I just did a video on um, Downtown. I, it just released probably like last month. I yeah, yeah, I seen yeah. it. I seen it. Yeah. yeah. It was dope. A little reset. I, I do my research. I did my research. <laughs> yeah, I got to do some research. <laughs> <laughs> what you, how you think? Uh, actually, what uh, is it that battle rappers do that make them fall short when it comes to making music? I'm trying to be too intricate, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. You kind of lose that because not everybody that listen to music are battle rap fans. You can't make them a battle rap fan because some people really don't like it. They'd be like, eh, y'all seem like pretenders. Because that's how they look at it. It is entertainment, so they look at it like y'all niggas just being fake. Yeah. After this, y'all shake hands. You know what I'm saying? 
So all that hard stuff, pause, we'll go out to, you know, get that mm. out of the way, man. You know what I'm saying? Just, just vibe. How you pick your production for your music? So I like sample beats. Uh, honestly, I go on YouTube or I holler at a couple of producers. I'm like, hey, what you got in the catalog? You know, send me something. And I also have some producers that send me beats. Then some of them I'm moving to the spam box, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, I'm unsubscribed. How can I make you start sending me beats? I don't like them. But, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just all over the place. It just, it just depends, you know what I'm saying, how yeah. I feel, what type of vibe I have at that moment. Yeah, I could feel this way one day, now I want to rap about this. Now I could feel uplifted another day, now I want to rap about that on the upbeat type beat. Yeah. It don't matter. I just try to be well-rounded, you know what I'm saying, so everyone yeah. can relate. Sometimes you hop on YouTube, put so-and-so type beat. Not really. Not really? No, nah, I used to. Uh, when I first started, when I got back active with the music, mm. I used to type in uh, Griselda <clears throat> type beats. Mm. So for me, coming from battle rap, okay, I can go this boom bap type beat and I can rap like this. And right. I'm like, nah, this ain't it. <laughs> so when you was getting back into music, I know you had that, like a pep talk, like when I do music this time, it's gonna be serious. What are some things that you say you are not gonna do this time when it comes to them doing your music? Not fall for niggas trying to scam you. Okay. You know, when you first start, you were like coast to coast mixing and stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, you pay this amount, then you will let you perform, and this and that. Man, I ain't going on all that, man. I know you're just trying to collect the check. It's business. I get it. Now yeah. I understand the business. Hey, man, going all that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not interested. I even got like two producers in my Insta, um, you know, on Instagram that DM me the other day. I like, hey, we can do this for you, and this and that, bro. You just trying to collect the check. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you trying to really look out. For upcoming artists, then let's work. You know what I'm exactly, saying? you talk. I can up. still invest in myself. Right, that's not investment. That's not going to do nothing. Right, I don't need a shout out or anything like that. Straight up, conversation a whole lot different when a producer want to collaborate opposed to when they want to tap your pockets. Right. Yeah. yeah, they hit you up. They be like so and so. Usually, when you hit somebody up, you're supposed to be willing to work for free. Mm -hmm. But it's like. They just go straight to the money and all like, right. Yeah. That How nigga, much is your budget? Yeah. That but nigga, nigga. KE on the track hit me with that shit years back. <laughs> nigga say, man, I love your work. I want to do some shit with you. Man, just pay me $5,000 and I got you. <laughs> no. I say, nigga. Nigga, what you mean by got me? You got to ask on that. Like, got me doing what, nigga, if I got to pay you 5000 and you yeah. kind of just showing your hand to show that, like, bro, you really in need for money. Right. Because yeah. when I leave you on red, then you hit me back a few hours later, you down. Right. Like, nigga, you really need this. I don't. Mm. Nah. Yeah, yeah. Try to scam somebody. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it, nowadays, yeah, that, I ain't about to say the whole compilation mixtape shit is dead, but it's like, it's, it's ways around it. But I remember, yeah, that used to be big, like, you're like, a lot of the time, like, they be having niggas pay for the mixtape, and it be, like, 80 niggas on the mixtape. Right. Be like, you're not going to listen to all 80 niggas. <laughs> I know I'm not. Yeah, yeah. you're not going to you're not gonna listen to half them niggas. Yeah. Exactly. I know DJs that do that, but um, I think it's better if a DJ actually, like, kind of what Khaled did, DJ Drama, uh, Funk Master Flex. Right, right. Do it. Yeah. Just have your song, pick out a beat. Hey, I want this artist and this artist. Let's collaborate. I think this. I think that... DJs really should be looking to find artists that they can put a project together with and try and make it something big for the two of them. Right. I agree. I totally agree. Like, if a DJ's taking it serious, you know what I'm saying, and you see potential in an artist mm -hmm. to where you could fuck with them and you could see how both of y'all could win. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like uh, DJ Pretty Rick and Trout back in the day. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. worked out for him. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. I'm going to look out for you in ways that I can. You do for me what you can, but at the end of the day, we know this split. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So who are, who are you trying to work with in the city? In the city? Yeah. I'm versatile. I don't... I don't mind working with anybody, honestly. Uh, but I do want to reach out to Holy Gabbana. 
Okay. I don't want to call him by his old name because I know he's pretty sure you want to do that. But yeah, uh, he's serious with yeah. that. Yeah, we uh we interviewed him. He 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 told me a thousand times. He was like, he was like, if you have Boonk in there, don't do that. I was like, bro, <laughs> I, I got you. I'm not disrespectful. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, respectfully, man. But yeah, I like to reach out to him, collaborate with him. We made it happen. Yeah. We made it happen. Yeah. Yeah. If you watching. You know, hit me up, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got his number. We hit him up. Um, sure. Yeah, he definitely be on some like real gospel type stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I'm on now. Uh, what we call truth music. Yeah. So just throw that out there. I know people would be like, "Oh, he's a Hebrew Israelite." If you listen to my music, I'm not with that camp stuff you see on YouTube. It's still right. going viral. Niggas walking around in purple shirts, purple right, right, right. <laughs> taking niggas chairs and all that. No, nah, we're not on that. I'm just part of a congregation. We just go by the Old Testament and the New Testament. And we call our God by his name. We call him Yahuwah. People call him Yahweh. It doesn't matter. As long as your prayers are being answered by the Malachim, which are in Hebrew, angels, and your prayers are being delivered to the God, the Elohim, that's all that matters, man. Yeah. You know what's right and you know what's wrong. And you live your life how you're supposed to. That's all I'm going to just put it that way. That's dope. Yeah, I don't know if we're supposed to say amen to that, but <laughs> straight up. Yeah, I, I ain't want to be disrespectful. I definitely about to say amen, but uh, nah, yeah. I, I ain't want to be disrespectful. But it's salute, all good, salute man. to that, man. <laughs> so w- with that, um, uh, how am I going to say it? Do you, do you not curse at all in your music, or do you just? I mean, I know some people that do. Yeah. Now, nah, let's, let's put it right here. Let's set it right here. You know how people be like, oh, he cursing his music. I say nigga. Yeah. I say damn. To to me, it's not a, a cuss word. To other people, it might be. It might just be a bad word. Will I let my kids say it? No. You're not grown. But what I'm saying is that a curse word really means that you're cursing somebody. Yes. That's all that means. So the F word, B words, and all that, duh, you can insult somebody. You know, you insulting somebody. But you know that's wrong. Why should you insult somebody? So you just say, hey, I'll try to be righteous. I will not come at you like that, Paul. Right, right. So, you know what I'm saying? It's just called bad words, but it's not actually curse words. You're actually cursing somebody. It's witchcraft if you curse someone. Yeah. Okay. Respect to that. When did you, uh, is the proper word convert? When did you uh, start following that uh, type of religion? 2016. 2016. And it was during the time where I graduated from FSU. Yeah, so I had to get adapted. Coming from, you know, college lifestyle and all that, too. So, it was a huge transition. Put it that way. Yeah. With that, you had to completely change your music up? I didn't start my music in 2016. Now, okay, I did a okay. feature. I did a feature. Then I see how, you know, okay, yeah, I can get with it. But it took me years later to actually, I'm going to do music again. I had that itch again, you know. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. Uh, what, what, what you working on right now? Right now, I'm working on my album called The Bootleg. Um, I'm dropping singles here and there. I got a new single dropping on my birthday, which is the Day of Atonement, uh, which is the day we fast. Uh, it's called All I Need. So okay. look out for that. I think I'm going to shoot a video for it, probably. Depends how I feel. Damn, man, you need to shoot a video for everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah. But yeah, that's why I'm on, man. They're trying to make it happen. That's what's up, man. You got any more questions for Levi? Nah, I man. Hey, look, uh, you got a verse for us? <laughs> I'm going to hit you with the Vince Staples. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I respect it. 100%. But I appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate yes, the opportunity. Sir. I've been wanting to come up here. Yeah, I love y'all podcast. I like what y'all doing, man. Man, appreciate, appreciate that, that for appreciate sure. That. Appreciate it, sure. man. All right, look into that camera, plug everything, man. And he got a classic episode of Creeping Through the Streets. Man, yeah, which, which we record in the studio. Go ahead and check that yeah, out. We're going to link that in the bio also. Go check that out. We're going to link the other videos in the bio also. Facts, facts. So, checking out Levi Without the Tribe, also known as Levi Fresco. Again, you can catch me on Instagram, Vintage Fresco, Facebook, Levi Fresco. I don't mess with Twitter, it's whatever it's called. Catch me on thread, the same thing, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, catch me on YouTube. Leave out what out the trial, leave out fresco versus anybody. Boom, we out of here. Yes, sir. This has been another episode of Random Max of Podcast, R.A.O.P. It's my co host, Mr. Jefferson. It's your boy, Ampavelli. With all that said, we out.